Hi, I'm Sean Clark. I'm standing in front of the Santa Cruz boardwalk from the film Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Welcome to Horrors Hall Ground. So we start our adventure today in Watsonville, California. This was the location of Big Top Burger. I don't know what this restaurant used to be, but now it kind of houses a food truck on the side and it's called Patrona Tacos. It's not really a restaurant, it is, but it's kind of strange. They've remodeled the inside, as you'll see here, to basically just be kind of a kitchen and they have a food truck parked on the side. I used some of this old footage that the uh, Chiotas shot when they were location scouting to get a better idea of what the layout of this building was because you don't see it too well in the film. As you can see, this is what it looked like from the inside looking out where the counter used to be and everything. But now it's pretty much just a giant kitchen with some tables outside and the food truck on the side. I don't believe this shot here with the big top burger trash can was shot on the side or in the rear of this location. None of these things match up. As you would have seen in that footage earlier, the rear of the building was just windows. You can see where the windows used to be back there. They're kind of covered up now, but it didn't make sense that that trash can scene was at this location, more than likely somewhere else. Also, if you look across the street, see that Mrs. Donuts location? You can see that in the background. It obviously used to be a Winchell's. You can see the old Winchell sign, same shape, but obviously they've changed it. That apartment building in the background, still see it right behind old Jumbo. <laughs> The road that the Terenzi Brothers ice cream truck rises over to come towards Make Out Point. And this will be the Make Out Point up this way. We'll build a fence here and the cars will be stacked up. Our make out point view with the ocean in the back, power plant in the whole entire uh, sea coast, and we got the town of Watsonville out there too. We'll dress this far right hand side to make it smaller, and our reverse will be these line, this line of trees. Now at the police station for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's now Parks and Community Services Department. And right here, this was it. This was the police station. Pretty freaking cool. They did shoot inside. I'm gonna go in, see if they let me get a few shots. But uh, yeah, this is it right here. So it'd be right here where Mike runs into the cop car. Yeah, I recognize those doorways for sure. Yeah. Now this used to be a real police station, right? Yeah, real, real police station. Uh, in the back, um, 
we have still like the remnants of the whole cell. You can hardly see it, but. Oh shoot, yeah. Yeah, that's the real, <laughs> the real deal. Right? Because I know in the movie they they showed cells. Yeah. Is there actual cells or no? no? The cells that took me in the back will be here. So that would be through there. That would be right through there. Ah, oh, that is cool. But those are all gone, huh? Those are all gone. What's in there today? They still got that huge door. Yeah, uh, it, that, the, surprisingly on the other side, it's all just uh, uh, drywall. <laughs> oh, just drywall? Yeah, so that door is not passable no more. But uh, this building was made out of concrete, so wow. So you know, it's, I guess it's kind of difficult to to re, to redo most of the stuff in it. But, um, that is so, so that cool. Still exists. Um, and yeah, sometimes that little that little window. Mm -hmm. you can actually, picture the clown is in there. So oh yeah. Two people out, they open it, like you can see a clown right there. So this is locked, and right here is where the guy was standing, watching the puppet show. He's doing a lot of these. <laughs> and things like that. He's loving that puppet show. And right here is where Spike rises up and gets a little payback for the criticism. It likes the puppet show or it gets the cotton candy again. Right now we're in front of El Dorado Fashions. This was the pharmacy in the film. The door used to be right here. This was the entrance to the pharmacy. So it would have been right about here where the clown was doing the movements. This obviously was had a little in cove and everything. One thing that we notice in the film, if you look on this wall right here, there was a sign that says Jensen's Apartments. Well, that's right here. This is the entrance to Jensen Apartments right here. This was known as the Jensen Building. There's a lot of history here. Pharmacy dates back to way back in the day. Right here. And we're going to take a look inside in just a minute. They moved the entrance to the corner here. So let's go take a look at that. So this is the current entrance to where the pharmacy used to be. So it hasn't changed a whole lot. There was some damage because of the earthquake. Uh, she told me they put some reinforcing beams inside, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. It's just a uh, you know, cowboy store now, cowboy fashion. You know, cowboys and clowns. Everybody loves a cowboy, everybody loves a clown. Back in the 80s, this used to be a drug store, right? Uh, yes. It was? Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Yeah. John, Johnson's Drugs? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. So right here is where the counter used to be. This was the counter and you can see that in the background behind the pharmacist. I verified with the owner this was Johnson's Drugs in the 80s. This was a pharmacy. She confirmed it. Also told me that the wife of the pharmacist still comes in to this day. One real standout is the square beams that, they're like poles that go through the center of the building. See one there? They're behind these clothes. They're draping clothes off of all of them. You see another one there. And they go all through the middle. You can see one pretty clearly there. These poles go from front to back, right down the center of the store, exactly like they did in the film. Now when you see this next part here, this was actually a set that they built to replicate the inside of the store so they could damage things. And then it cuts back to the real store here right at the end. Directly across the street from El Dorado Fashions is the Goodwill, still a Goodwill today. This is where we see a young Chris Titus walking across the street right here. Right where that SUV is is where Mooney was sitting in his car giving him the evil eye as he walked across the street, nursing a beer. Right here is where Grant Kramer comes running around the corner, AKA Mike Tobacco. 
right here. There's the alley where the ice cream truck comes out and where that gentleman walks down right there. All right, so now standing at the alley that you saw the ice cream truck come out of, this also happens to be the same alley where the you're gonna knock my block off incident happened right down here. I'll show you. Now the big giveaway is along this part of the building here, there are windows. They're gone today, but you can see where they were. If you take a close look at the building, you can see the squares on the wall where those big windows were. See that? Right there. Take a look. Shorty comes riding his bike up. And back here, there was a, either a fake wall or another structure at the end of this alley. But it took place right about over here. Let me show you. You can still see part of this wall. You can see that window, but I think there was another structure back here at the time. I believe this part of the building is new and that there was more that went out this way and a wall here at the end. This might even be part of that wall that used to be here. This wall right here. That would mean that right about here is where that scene would have taken place. This is definitely the alley, no doubt, 100%. This building is called the Plaza Vigil and this side of the building used to be where this brick wall was. During the 89 earthquake, it was badly damaged and they had to rebuild this side of the building. This photograph was taken just after the earthquake and you can still see the side of the building with the pipes. And that's what it looks like today. If you need more convincing, see that one bar look going sort of diagonal? You can see it right there. So you're probably wondering, hey Sean, what are you doing at the Watsonville Community Hospital. Did you hurt yourself? That's not what you're thinking. You're just wondering, what the hell am I doing here? Well, there's a reason. Watsonville Community Hospital used to be another building. It's, this area here has been redeveloped, but this building, as you'll be able to see in this aerial shot from years ago to compared to now, this was just one giant warehouse, and this is where all the Killer Clowns interior sets were. The inside of the spaceship was right in here. Everything was inside this building right here. Check it out. All through here, the Killer Clowns interiors. Not that exciting, but you know, I'm a completist. I'm very thorough, so gotta get it all. Now it's a hospital. How, how interesting would that be though? You go to the hospital and come and find out you're being treated in, you know, the cotton candy cocoon room from Killer Clowns, right here behind me. We now head from beautiful Watsonville, California to Santa Cruz, California. This is where we have the March of the Clown scene. From up there, they threw down the cotton candy cocoons and you can see this little restaurant in the background. Still a restaurant today. All this takes place on one little stretch of street called Cooper Street in Santa Cruz, California. Some of it looks a little different here. Some of these building fronts have been changed, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. So now we are here with Mike Martinez, AKA many, many clowns in the film. <laughs> Slim for a lot of, a lot of the film, right? Uh, yeah, especially on this, at this location. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this was yeah, definitely slim at this location because yeah. this, we're heading over to where the car went off the bridge, but right here, this is where the uh, it was police the car police car rear-ended. You guys said to stop. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was uh, doubling uh, Michael Siegel. Uh, the Terenzi, the Terenzi brothers. brothers, yeah, driving the ice cream truck. Let's walk <laughs> down here and take a look at it. This is heading into the New Brighton State Beach, I believe. State Park Beach. Yeah. Park, beach, beach, park, whatever. 
So the cars are heading in the direction we're walking. As far as I remember, yeah. yeah. And right about here is where the ice cream truck stopped. Yeah, it was hard for me to remember because, you know, we filmed it at night. So at night, this place mm -hmm. is just disappears. It's just all black. <laughs> yeah, probably about here is where the shot would have been. Probably a pretty easy stunt to pull off, yeah? Yeah, because uh, they actually didn't want to damage the car, the police car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he just came to a, uh, an abrupt stop and then the actors just reacted as if they'd been hit, you know. They had the big clown head on top of it, which is what made it a little challenge when driving it down the uh, the little town because of the trees were overhanging. I had to kind of systematically turn one direction and turn it sharp to get the head to <laughs> miss trees here and there. <laughs> so pretty time, pretty much any time there was a driving shot, it was usually you driving. Yeah, yeah, the ice cream truck. Yeah, we had the contraption that I was next to the car when I was smashing into it as Slim, the clown. And then uh, when we actually, the car went off the road, it was actually pulled by a cable. This is where it was. The car started somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. And nobody was driving it. It was had a couple of sandbags mm -hmm. holding the car back. Yeah. And then uh, it was cabled. There was a couple of pulleys there, mm -hmm. and then it was cabled to pull it over. And they wanted it to really go shooting out because it was a pickup truck pulling it. Somewhere along the line, they forgot to remove the sandbag that was holding the car back. Mm -hmm. So when they went to pull it, the cable snapped. and. The car just kind of slowly drifted down the <laughs> hill, <laughs> and it still crashed through the uh, through the fencing that's still there, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, fortunately, the car went over and then tipped over because mm -hmm. it was a lot less dramatic than they wanted. And then they figured, okay, well, we'll put some fire in there, and that's what kills the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go take a look at it. <laughs> and here's the spot right yeah, here. Yeah, it went over right here. So, so it crashed down into here. Mm -hmm. They were filming from the beach. The water is a lot higher than what it was back then. You know, yeah. the tide was out. And then Slim comes walking up here, looking at his handiwork. And then you just did the <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, and then they <laughs> throw my head back, and then they cut to an animatronic clown laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and action. No! <laughs> that was it. I can't believe the I can't believe we actually found the exact location. <laughs> <laughs> it's my due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> Deb's house, yes, Debbie's house, and uh, yeah, this is the this is definitely it. Uh, of course, when I saw it, it had all kinds of ribbons and everything all over it because it was supposedly already being attacked by clowns. And um, this was the exterior, but we actually did shoot inside also for the most part, except the bathroom scene was done on stage. But uh, in the shot where she opens the door and slims at the door, mm -hmm. was that you or was that another actor playing uh, slim? That, that was time? actually Herod because oh. I was busy working stunts with Suzanne because she ended up having to do a lot of her own stuff. And we had set up a teeter-totter for when uh, the clown didn't really pick her up. It was a, uh, the clown was on a framework and then they attached the hands to her shoulder and then we just raised her with a teeter-totter. Yeah, because one thing I noticed when he came to the door and she opened the door and he was standing there, you can see those pillars uh, behind him, like over the shoulder. Right. So it was definitely shot from inside that house. Right, yeah. Now when they're leaving Deb's house, you'll notice that the streets that they're passing back and forth by are pretty much right there at her house. In fact, they pass her house a few times. 
you'll see here that house is next door to Deb's house. See that blue house on the left? That's Deb's house. And there it is again. See? The blue house. They passed it a few times. They were just making use of all these streets that were right there. This is a street that's pretty much across the street from her house. All in the same neighborhood. So right in this area here, on this street, this is where all the driving scenes were filmed. They just kept shooting on different sides of the street. You'll see this fire station a couple times, I believe. It's this one place right here. In the film, it's a sports store of some sort called Sports Something. And now it looks like it's a, I don't know if it's nails or something, it's a nail salon, but you'll see. I don't know, is this looking familiar? Actually, yeah. Um, I don't know where we accessed it from, but it was, I mean, you know, you kind of see something that could have been a road Yeah. right there. And they may have used that as the shot going, because the same area where they supposedly were running from the, getting shot with a popcorn gun, they got in the car, took off and it was just a dirt road like this and then that's when I got hit by the SUV jumping on the hood. Oh yeah yeah. And yeah. then got then got shaken off and then landed on the ground. Actually and, you can see there's some fencing over there. We walk a little further this way, maybe there is an access point right yeah. here. Oh looks it, yeah. Hmm. Equestrian park. Yeah this this is probably it. Any of this looking familiar? Oh, yeah. look at this big open spot here. This could have been where the yeah had the tent or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I bet you this is. I bet you this is where the tent was. Yeah. I mean, you'd know better than me. I'm just yeah. saying that that looks like a total possibility because it's there aren't too many open spaces here. Yeah, and you know this when the clowns are walking supposedly to town, it could have just been down a thing like this because I think it was just a dirt road leading to it in the film. Yeah, with a fake sign. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, this kind of looks like it was the type of area. And then when they came running out, I remember Grant had popcorn in his hands while he was running and he was kind of flinging it <laughs> as he was running. That is a big ass tree right here in the middle. <laughs> Look at that tree. Look at this. That is a monster. <laughs> wow. Pretty impressive. Huh. Well, huh. all this way to look at an empty field. <laughs> <laughs> They took this real shot of the hillside and the coast and then did a matte painting of the boardwalk and amusement park to give the illusion that they were heading there. In actuality, they are heading in the right direction. And now we are at the Santa Cruz boardwalk. As you can see, the facade of the crazy house was right over this chocolate-covered strawberry stand. And if you look over here, this is still painted the same colors all these years ago. You can kind of see an arcade sign peeking out behind the, the facade. And that would have been that over there. It was different, obviously, but the entrance to the arcade would have been right here. But you can see it pretty much looks exactly the same. 
and you can see the Riptide ride right here at the end. Boom. So they just shut the door as they're closing up for business. But right here on the ground would have been the big pile of ice cream that they put the giant cherry on top that once was the security guard. And then they headed inside the crazy house, which would have been this entrance right here. Oh yeah, it is scary. And right here is where the clown car approached. And then later, they showed up in the ice cream truck, heading right around this, what is now the churro stand, but back then was Super Sunday. As you can see, the Ferris wheel is gone, but everything else pretty much looks identical as it did in the film. Pretty awesome. Here's the angle from when the ice cream truck pulled up. You can see this light pole here is covered with flyers. The crazy house. I may get me a chocolate covered strawberry tomorrow at the crazy house. So where you could see the tent of the spaceship poking up behind the crazy house. Then in a bit of trickery, they show Mike and Deb run from this way, like they're running out of the crazy house. They run past this ride here, which used to be a different color. You can see the roller coaster in the background and you see them run underneath this building here, which is one of the games. Then in a little Hollywood magic, they cut back to the other side of the roller coaster again and they run past this hot dog on a stick and under the roller coaster heading out towards the parking lot. And this is where things get a little confusing. You see this here. This is all a map painting of the amusement park and we assume it's this parking lot here, but it's not. They actually shot it at a parking lot in Los Angeles and we're gonna go there right now. So here we are at the final location from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and look who's with me, Mike Tobacco himself, Mr. Grant Kramer. Hey, how you doing, buddy? So tell me what you remember about this location in Van Nuys, which is way far away from everything else used in the film. Well, it was, uh, it was definitely at least a couple months after we finished shooting. Mm -hmm. Basically, I think they'd done some test screenings and figured out that people just didn't really want uh, Dave or anybody to have died in the movie. Mm -hmm. So. People had said, oh man, you know, we kind of wish they were still alive, so they decided to change the ending, so. What was the original ending? Was Well, the original ending was, uh, I guess he'd gone off and exploded in the clown car, was inside the spaceship when it went up and exploded. Mm -hmm. Everything just kind of blew up. Debbie and, Debbie and Mike are still alive, but everybody else is. Did it still out. have the ending with you guys getting hit in the face with pies? No. Oh, so that was all added? All added. So all, the movie was just supposed to end with you guys blowing up, or the ship blowing up. I, as I recall, it was like the ship blows up and Debbie and I are kind of on the boardwalk and watching it like this and like, oh, oh, oh right? Mm -hmm. And the cop cars come running in, come, all come pulling in and that's the end of the movie. And that was all shot probably in the parking lot at the, at the Santa Cruz boardwalk? Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly, this is kind of where we came running right up and uh, the clown car was pretty much right at, in this area and you know the whole thing's supposed to come flying down right here this is where we got hit in the face by the pies so it's pretty much right right where we're standing almost looks like it could be it yeah exactly <laughs> Look at that. i mean let's just put a let's see how many clowns are in there yeah oh yeah i know let's see now are you surprised here we are how many years later and you're still talking about this damn movie you're standing in the parking lot you know with some like nerd <laughs> with my buddy, the nerd, <laughs> talking with this actor, old actor friend, the nerd. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it's, yeah, kind of. I mean, life is weird, right? I mean, yeah. it's like we, we kind of talked back at that time that it was a trippy movie and could, mm -hmm. it would possibly be, a, you know, kind of a cult movie, but I don't think you ever really anticipate. You know, at the time, you know, you made it and it was really fun and it kind of came out and went away and... I actually had some other movies that, um, you know, like Hard Bodies that had become kind of a, a more of like an instant kind of cult movie. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then, you know, that movie started to fade away and suddenly 
killer clowns just was like the tortoise, you know, yeah. just kept on creeping and creeping and creeping. And I mean, it's a trip. I picked my six year old up from school today and uh, he points to his friend, you know, who's wearing a killer clown shirt, you know, as I'm picking up all the little kids. No way. School. Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, wait, you know, he, he wants to know, he heard that your dad was had something to do with killer clowns. I said, oh, I'll bring him a picture tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. That's funny. And uh, so it's like, it's, it is a total trip that this movie we made so long ago is, it has seems, legs. seems to get bigger yeah. every year, right? I, I mean, mean, look now, Spirit Halloween has all this exclusive merchandise this yeah. year. There's an animatronic clown figure. Yeah, I and, mean, and I think so crazy. many kids are getting turned on to it by their, you know, like like third generations of parents now, yeah. you know, like their parents got turned on to it and now they're getting turned on to it. And it's crazy. Yeah, so it's just, it's kind of the, it's kind of that, you know, the crazy thing that even though you could think about it, you just, you, you know, until something like that happens, you just can't even believe it. Well, dudes, thanks so much for taking a little time out of your day and coming here and reliving probably the most boring location from this episode. But still, this is where the movie ended. You stick and a cloud car in it, though, and it's, it's some pie, it still becomes pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like we should be looking up and, like, any second we'll get a hit. Yeah. <laughs>